The rumors of React Court's demise are greatly exaggerated. Here we are sorting by the best posts of the month. Some of these we have seen, like would I be the asshole for suing a customer for damaging an extremely valuable item? Uh, have you considered, I forgot, this is the one where she had the audacity to take a selfie inside of a store. Um, we, I think we also saw this one. We, I, we did not see this one, though. Oh, and it's removed. Okay, well, never mind. <laughs> Scroll down. 21 days ago. I can't remember the last time we did React Court. Am I the asshole for telling my ex that his runaway 16-year-old niece was staying with me even after she begged me not to tell her family where she is? All right. That seems a little scary. Also, not enough info. Uh, no, they, I'm looking at the results. It seems like most people thought there was enough info. <laughs> my ex's 16-year-old niece, Greta, showed up to my house unexpectedly, set up a, a, a biodegradable composter, started yelling at us about our carbon footprint because we were uh, buying foods without scanning the barcode to see where they originally uh, originated. Good one, good one. We could have also done Greta Van Fleet. Started uh, coming into my house, uh, literally sounding exactly like Led Zeppelin, but without the same songwriting chops. And then, you know, everybody that you went to high school with is like, whoa, they're the new Led Zeppelin because they sound the same. So true, so true. Uh, anyway, she told me she was tired of living with her family and needed somewhere to stay for a few days before she was going to find a way to fly back to where her friends and boyfriend lived. Her friend showing up. Wait, her showing up was a huge shock because me and her uncle are currently in the middle of a divorce and haven't been together for over two years, and in that time I've had no contact with her. It was the middle of the night, so I agreed to let her stay for the time being, and I offered to speak to her family for her, but she begged me not to. She told me if I told her family, she would leave and never speak to me again. All right, before we get into this, I always like to make a judgment on incomplete information that sometimes vindicates me and sometimes makes me look like an idiot in the future. <laughs> but I feel like if you have your 16-year-old niece, like I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of the OP here. One of my nieces in like six years came over and was like, you know, my home is unsafe. Uh, then I might, I mean, I would probably try to talk to... The parents, nonetheless, uh, but like that's a different story than her coming and saying, I'm kind of tired of living with my family. Like, yeah, no way. Like, you're 16 years old. Of course, you're tired of living with your family. You've been living there for 16 years. That's that's like you're at that weird intersection of like slowly being able to like have divergent interests from your parents, but also not even coming close to like the capability of, you know, being able to provide for yourself yet. So, it's an awkward time, for sure. Like, if it's an abusive household, which does not appear to have been mentioned, but it could be true, I'm not going to project that, but then that's a different story than just, like, oh, I'm kind of sick of it. Anyway, also, like, I maybe I'm not a... Um, I, I'm an only child. I don't have any siblings, right? But I kind of feel like if I did... I would want to see the closeness of like, you know, I, I feel like my relationship with my sibling takes precedent over their relationship with my kid. Like, I, I would feel very offended, again, if this is just a situation where she's tired of living at home, if my brother or sister was like, yeah, don't worry about it. I'm definitely not going to tell my uh, my brother, who is your father, that you're here. I'm just going to let you run away instead. Anyway. It's, oh, I mean, it's her ex's niece. Now, I, now I'm even like, for, dude, it, then it, I, weirdly enough, even though it's like a further relationship, I'm like, you're not even, <laughs> just without being rude, <laughs> you're not even part of the family anymore. That's one of those, you just got to dump that onto the, uh, onto the relevant parties and then like change your locks or something like that. You, you get, that's something where you serve as like, you're the receptionist for this drama. You pass it to your ex-husband 
and then you just get on with your life. This is not relevant to you anymore. IMO, at least. She told me if I told her family, she would leave and never speak to me again. Don't threaten me with a good time. Now, here was the issue. I have a four-year-old son who FaceTimes his dad almost every day and basically gives him a play-by-play -play of every little thing that's happened to him since their last call. There was no way he wasn't going to mention it since he was super excited when he saw Greta. I tried explaining this to Greta, but she kept threatening to leave if I spoke to her uncle. Oh, yeah, that seems like a, it's a totally normal situation. Hitting your ex-aunt with an ultimatum that if your four-year-old son lets it leak that she's staying there, you'll never speak to her again. Like, this is what, I, I'm, again, I'm not, I don't know what's going on in the 16-year-old's life, okay? But when people are like, I feel like she wouldn't run away for no reason. Look, this is a, it's not a, exactly when people are at like their most rational in their lives, you know? That is clearly she's maybe not being totally fair in the situation. For a few days, it was fine because my ex kept canceling because he had an emergency he needed to deal with. In that time, I kept trying to convince Greta to change her mind and asked her for a better explanation on why she had run, but she wouldn't open up to me. She just kept saying she wanted to go home. The next time my ex called, I went into another room and explained that Greta was here because I felt it was better to hear it from me than our son, and it was also better for me because I didn't want to risk our divorce turning hostile over this. He told me not to tell her that I had told him and that someone would be there soon to take her home. That was a huge S show. Greta told me she hated me and I ruined her life as she was escorted home. Then my ex showed up a few hours later and he chewed me out for not telling him immediately. Am I the asshole? Kind of? So there's, there's a lot to tease apart here. First off, I've had like a hell of a four or five day period. Um, and this is so complicated and dramatic that it makes me feel like I'm living in, you know, like an episode of the most boring show of all time. It's fantastic. Like, I, I'm so thankful that my life is not as interesting as OP's is because this is just, it just seems highly exhausting. So the first thing I'll say is maybe this sucks for OP, but your 16-year-old ex-niece saying that she hates you and you ruined her life because you did something that you felt was responsible and in her best interest, welcome to the fucking game. That's just, that's the price you pay for knowing a teenager, I think. <laughs> I don't mean to be rude, okay? I was a teenager once. I thought I was thinking rationally about everything, did not necessarily end up computing that way once you look back on it. But, like, there's a reason that, you know, we don't let 16-year-olds uh, vote or, like, you know, rent a car. We could let them drive their mom's, you know, Jeep Liberty or whatever uh, unsupervised. That's no big deal because it's, well, it's only, like, you know, 3,500 pounds or whatever capable of driving, like, 90 miles an hour. But I'm just saying there's no... They're not the most rational people in the world. You didn't ruin her life. Like, how, what do you mean you ruined her life? Just because she has to go... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, there's no way this doesn't come across as like a, uh, a boomer take. Don't get me wrong. But I'm like, wait, you're 16 years old. What is it? Did it ruin your life when like, you know, Batman versus Superman came out? You were so excited for it forever for like eight months from when you found out about it. And then it kind of sucked. And you're like, my life is over. It's not over. You're going to go to college. You're going to forget that this stuff ever happened. Again, given the information that we have available here, I can't, I can't deign anything from this that is not written into the post, okay? Um, and then the Snyder Cut came out, and it saved me. So that, I'm just like, eh, get over it. Um, Greta told me she hated me, and I ruined her life as she was escorted home, okay? Who cares? Not, not to be rude. Then my ex showed up a few hours later and chewed me out for not telling him immediately. Am I the asshole? I do kind of feel like... I don't think she's like... Look, if this assuming this story is real, OP was faced with a difficult situation. They took some time to deliberate or at least kick the can down the road. They're kind of an asshole for, like, you know, being in custody of a minor and not letting her family know right away. Like, considering, you, you got to put yourself in the mindset of, of the parents as well, who we can't assume necessarily did anything heinous. 
they must have had like a terrible 48, 72 hours, you know, trying to figure out where their daughter was and, you know, running through their head that she's probably been murdered somewhere. You know what I mean? So I could totally see why OP would be an asshole here. Um, even if she didn't ask for the situation to, to be on her doorstep, no matter what. Yeah, maybe that's why <laughs> her, her, I don't mean to laugh, um, but maybe that's why her ex-husband ha kept having to cancel. Sorry, sorry, son, I can't FaceTime today. I'm dealing with the potential uh, kidnapping or murdering of my niece. Uh, wouldn't that, that's like some Gift of the Magi stuff, right? You know, she's, it sounds like the problem was like self-regulating. So, I mean, I don't know. Well, what do you mean is everybody sucks here? Who's, who's the other person that sucks though? I mean, I guess the niece, I definitely don't disagree that the niece is <laughs> putting her in an awkward position, but the ex, what's wrong with the ex, man? The four-year-old, well, he, you know, he's not exactly a steel trap. He, he's a, he seems like he's a bit of a snitch, but he is four, you know. Okay, well, anyway, the final verdict is not enough info, but also the final verdict is actually not the asshole. 47%. Oh yeah, okay, chat. One moment, please. I'm just gonna I'm gonna help my wife out with something here and then we'll go read the comments. Okay, see you in a second. All right, I'm back. I'm back. Chair and mic stream. <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I look, dude, I'm getting, I, th I think most people kind of understand where I'm coming from on this one, but I do. It's so annoying to read comments that are like, it sounds like NL's not even considering that like abuse is a possibility. This is react court, not react gossip. You know, if something is not admitted as evidence, I'm not going to be like, hey, it sounds like your parents are probably hitting you. So not the asshole, right? Like I can only... Read a judgment on what's actually placed in the post in the first place. Otherwise, you just become like a... It, it's like a dictatorship where you put your own headcanon into every issue. You know, you could also assume her parents are actually awesome, but the kid's just a little bit of an idiot and is running away because she's just... You know, her brain is so fucked up on, like, teenage chemicals and, you know, increasing autonomy and responsibility and uh, the inevitable opening up of adult life that happens to everybody as well. Happens all the time. Too, too much damn taurine. Exactly. Because the, 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 the white monsters, man. Maybe her boyfriend is Elon Musk. We, uh, we could just make up whatever we want. Exactly. Anyway, let's let's see what kind of insanity we get to in the comments. I mean, most people said not the asshole. Info. Why is Greta running away? Did, I mean, we, we did say this. If she's leaving a stable home to go live with a deadbeat boyfriend, you could be a massive asshole for helping her. If she's fleeing an abusive situation, you're an asshole for taking steps you know would return her. That's absolutely true. There's nothing wrong with it. Judge Judata! <laughs> What a great name. This is my, my, well, if, if you're the Judge Judy of Am I the Asshole, then I have to be, I don't even know, like, I guess I'll be Judge Mathis. hi -o. Um, You do realize that the emergency was his missing niece? I do think you're in the wrong for not telling them sooner, but obviously not the asshole for telling them. Yeah. Okay. It, <laughs> Judge, Judge Mills Lane, Judge Joe Brown. I know many judges. Not the asshole. I agree with your ex, though. She's a 16-year-old runaway. Take her in to keep her safe, but her parents are worried sick. Not the asshole. Unless they are legally emancipated, it is a crime in most states to harbor a runaway. This may suck, but you are required to tell the parents or tell the police that you are providing the child sanctuary. That's another thing, actually, that I didn't consider. Normally, I hate when people are like, oh, it's a crime, it's a crime. Because I'm like, you know, that's sometimes that's valid. But like, also, 
you know, sometimes it's like, you know, you, I, I think you gotta, there's the spirit of being like a good person that if the cops aren't involved, takes precedence over the law. You know what I mean? Like when I was 12, it was New Year 2000, you know, Y2K, new millennium. I was 12 years old. My parents were like, hey, you should have a little sip of champagne. And I was like, what? Are you crazy? Like, that's, I'm, that's, what? it's illegal. And they were like, it's the new millennium. You're only gonna, like, live through the new millennium once. And I was like, whoa, I don't want to. Anyway, I did. It tasted like poison. What they did was illegal. But at the same time, I look back on it as a fond and, and funny memory, you know? And I, I think that's why you can't live your whole life equating necessarily morals and ethics with the letter of the law. That's actually legal? Well, tell that to their probation officer. Um, but, they, I mean, they're not, chat's not going to like this one, okay? But if there was, if there was a situation where you thought maybe abuse was a, an issue and that as a result you were not comfortable telling the parents... You could also get the police involved and be like, I don't exactly know what's going on here. You guys sort it out. I don't think that that's going to be the most popular take on the internet. I'm just saying you, you could as well. That's another option. Everybody sucks here. I assume a 16-year-old is, is a minor where you are. Greta put you in an untenable position by turning up like this and you had a duty to let her parents and guardians know where she was. Had she raised issues of abuse, you should contact the police or social services. You shouldn't have accepted a minor into your home without anyone else knowing. Your ex is an asshole for behaving like that? I'm, I feel like I'm losing my mind here. What did the ex-husband do wrong? Like, he's the asshole because he called her an asshole? He, he's the asshole because he said he was mad? He yelled at her? <laughs> Did he yell at her? I don't know. I kind of feel like, to be honest with you, if I... And, and again, now I am admittedly projecting onto the... I'm putting my own headcanon into the situation, okay? But, like, if I had been helping my sibling deal with the disappearance of their teenage daughter for, like, two or three days, and then my ex-wife was like, oh, yeah, she's been here the whole time. I would probably be like, are you fucking crazy? Like, you never thought over the past two days when we were, like, dealing with this shit for absolutely no reason, you could have just, like, let that drop for a second so these people weren't living in pure panic for the last, uh, you know, three or four days? Just hypothetically speaking, I think it's a situation where being mad is fairly reasonable. That sounds reasonable to me. You suck, Greta sucks. Your ex doesn't suck. The fact you didn't mention it when it's clear his emergency was he was dealing with his missing niece makes you so wrong even if you did tell him. She showed up in the middle of the night. You show her to your guest room, go back to bed, call her parents as soon as everybody wakes up. That's what normal people do. You can't harbor a 16-year-old runaway. You need to call Child Protective Services rather than calling the family if there's abuse. A teenager was missing. Her parents didn't know if she'd been kidnapped, trafficked, was safe with family, was on the streets or what. And you stuck your head in the sand waiting for someone else, apparently your four-year-old, to forcibly act for you. That's terrible. Well, yes. Frankly, if I were Greta's parents, I'd have charged you criminally. I don't... Can you just do that? What is the... I mean... We, look... She did, I really think she messed up. I don't know what kind of crime, I guess she was like harboring a runaway, which maybe is a crime, but come on. Can you do that? I don't know if you can just <laughs> charge people criminally for annoying you, but I feel like, wait, why we gotta suck up all these taxpayer dollars? Like, just, you know, eviscerate them socially and then move on with your lives. Anyway, I think we've, we've pretty much milked this one. It seems like everybody's more or less on the same page here. Okay, we got, am I the asshole for making my son pass out the candy he got from trick-or-treating? We saw that last time. We saw that one last time. 
How about this one? Am I the asshole for shaming my in-laws after my mother-in-law told a romantic story? Oh, hold on. I've gotten, I've gotten lost in the sauce. I'm like 10 tabs deep here. <clears throat> this should be good. Anytime the mother-in-law gets involved, like, it, it's always interesting because it's not your mom. Like, I even, like, so I, I told the story of, like, um, like, we got a, just before bed last night, literally as we were getting ready to go to bed, Kate looked at her phone and was like, oh, my God. And she had, I came over and she had texts from her mom that was like her, it was said, SOS, I'm in danger. Her exact GPS coordinates and then two random photos that I'm sure it just took with the front facing camera. Uh, that was like a light fixture and the top of her head. So we were like, oh my God, she must have like, either she's been kidnapped or she fell down. She can't get up or something. So we called her. She didn't pick up. We called Kate's dad. He didn't pick up. We called Kate's sister. She didn't pick up. And we were like freaking out. Like we were, we were basically like five seconds away from calling 911 and being like, you got to break down my mother-in-law's door and make sure she's okay. Or like start a, a missing persons report or something. Then thankfully it wasn't so late at night that everybody was asleep. Kate's mom like saw that she had missed the call from Kate and was like, oh yeah, sorry. I sent that by accident. <laughs> I, I tried to cancel it, but I guess it went through. Um, apparently, I didn't know this. Apparently, on Samsung phones, this is what GameBot said, but it, 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 Kate also said it's on iPhone as well. Um, if you tap the lock button or press the lock button three times in rapid succession, it starts a five-second timer that is like... If you don't cancel this, we're going to send two photos and your GPS coordinates to like everybody on your contact list that you've selected or something like that. Um, so that's what happened. And even though she was like super in the wrong, it was a mistake. But still, I was like, I don't want to tweet this shit and put Kate's mom on blast. She's family. But then I also had a little devil on my shoulder that is like, this is fucking funny, man. That's a great story. So I asked my wife, I said, would it be okay if I tweeted this? And she said, yes, that would be fine. And then she also tweeted about it. <laughs> so <laughs> I felt like that was a fair, maybe this is an am I the asshole situation for me, but I was like, Maybe at, at worst, it's everybody sucks here. Because I kind of feel like after you maybe accidentally send a message that's like, I've been kidnapped, um, you could maybe look at your phone and be like, sorry, that was a fat finger or something, instead of just letting it sit there for like 30 minutes. That's just, just for the future. IMO, I would say. Uh, we had the same, a very similar thing happen... Um, like when my mom was staying here like a year ago, she headed back to her Airbnb and then she meant to type, like text me and say, I'm inside. But instead she sent me a uh, man inside. And then I was like, what? And I called her and she was like, oh yeah, it was a typo. And I was like, okay, have a good night. <laughs> Just like, we gotta, there needs to be like a, a confirm, like it reads, the, once you get over the age of 50, is like, it uh, like reads the text back to you, and then you have to say like your birthday or something like that in order to actually send the text. At least she didn't say man inside me. I mean, honestly, it, on the spectrum of things, I would rather my mom be having an illicit affair then go to her Airbnb and get killed by somebody that's hiding in her closet or something like that. Neither would be necessarily what I would choose for, for her fate, but like in the whole scheme of things, that one of them is like really bad, the other one is cataclysmic. Thank, thank you for the raid, Daniel, by the way. We're just moving on to our next story. <laughs> oh. 
Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. Like, again, I, I, I love my parents, but my mom does do that sometimes where she's like, can we call tonight? And I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. Like, is 8 p.m. okay? And then, uh, like, she calls me and she's like, you know, how's your day going? And I'm like, it's going good. But the message you sent me was kind of like, is anxiety inducing? Like, is everybody alive and well? And she's like, yeah, I just wanted to talk. Like, you can't send the message that is like, can we call tonight or something like that? Because it, it, it leaves you simmering in the anxiety the whole time. But anyway, I, I apologize. <laughs> Am I the asshole for shaming my in-laws after they told, after my mother-in-law told a romantic story? I don't like my in-laws. I'll be honest. We've always had issues. Mother-in-law grew up wealthy. And as of right now, I would classify them as very wealthy slash full-blown rich. But when they got married, her family disowned her, and they were poor for a little while. The one thing I actually find redeeming in mother-in-law is that despite how vain and materialistic she is, she really did love her husband more than the money. Hey, you gotta hand it to her. She married him for love. She loves money. <laughs> That's the situation roast on Donald Trump. Comedy Central 2013, MLA reference certified. Um, on the other hand, my biggest issue with mother-in-law and father-in-law is that they love each other way, way more than they love their kids. And mother-in-law actually looks down on me for prioritizing my children and makes snide comments that she feels bad for her son. Honestly, OP sounds like a huge asshole. Like if, if the mother-in-law was making comments that she feels bad for your son, that's bad. That's way over the line. If she feels bad for her own son, that's just like self-disparagement. That's not an insult to you. I don't understand. We were talking about Christmas recently, and mother-in-law made fun of people who don't like the materialism because that's the best part. She then told what she clearly considered a sweet story about how when they were poor, father-in-law worked extra shifts and saved to buy her a diamond ring because she didn't get an engagement ring. My father-in-law, or my, sorry, my husband made a joking comment about how he probably didn't get anything that Christmas. Mother-in-law laughed and admitted he got something from the dollar store because she did the budget and spent all the money on father-in-law and father-in-law spent all the money he saved on her ring. Okay, the husband is the son. I understand now. She laughed like it was funny, but I didn't think it was. And my kids looked at me kind of confused because in our house, Christmas is all about the kids. Okay, this is like, it's just difference in, in people's philosophies right now. There's not, nothing that crazy. This seems like a totally normal situation right now. Mother-in-law called me out on making a face and I was honest and told her that was pretty weird and in my world kids get Christmas presents first. Some years my husband and I don't even exchange gifts. Okay, good for you. What do you want? A medal that says like a normal person? Mother-in-law got defensive and said my husband can't even remember that year but she can and said marriage is forever. Kids leave and have new families. I said that I stood by what I said and mother-in-law seemed upset. She gets very defensive about not being the greatest mom. And father-in-law said I was just jealous because my husband wouldn't do that for me. All right, that's kind of over the line. It definitely made the mood weird. And when we left, mother-in-law muttered that I was making her look bad to my kids, which I don't think is true. They are just perceptive and curious and have their own opinions of her. Um, <clears throat> well, I don't, I don't want to say that there's like more info required here. But I would say, like, if your kid was, like, you know, three or younger, I think it kind of makes sense to blow your Christmas budget on a gift for your spouse instead of on a gift for your kid. I mean, you can get a, you can make a three-year-old kid's day with, you know, five bucks at the dollar store. You can get them, like, a, you know, a toy gun, a bunch of cups with Jojo Siwa's face on them or something like that. And, you know, they'll, 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 one of those... Weird little sheriff's badges that smells like, you know, carcinogenic chemicals and stuff like that. And then they're having a great day. That, that's like a, that's a good Christmas for them. It's, it's more about the experience and then like, just, dude, you could later, you can give a kid like a stick and then like 10 seconds later, they're like Mace Windu, right? Um, so I don't think, I, I think it's a little crazy, crazy is not the right word. It's a little over the line for the OP to be criticizing like what might be a 30 year old event um, that honestly seemed like your husband was just kind of like making a joke about. Um, that being said, I think it's in everybody sucks here just because the father-in-law said, 
I, <laughs> like, I, I, I guess I have to look at it through like the husband's uh, perspective, which is that your dad is like, Hey, your wife is just jealous because my son wouldn't do that for her. I I would feel like maybe this is just the position I prefer to be in. It's operating from a posi position of weakness. But it's like, first off, Christmas 1992 got fucked up for me. I got like a can of Star Kiss tuna from the dollar store. My mom got a $3,000 diamond ring. And then 30 years later, I'm also getting hit again because they're like, I bet you wouldn't do that for your wife. And you're like, I didn't, I'm literally like the only innocent person in this situation. The first story, I was a kid. And then the second part of this, I would just happen to be here. Like, why am I getting you know blasted i'm i'm like getting hit in the crossfire because you guys are having a fight <laughs> it doesn't make any sense right i mean i think this isn't everybody sucks here hello simvicta hello but this is like this is i i don't even want to like click on the comments here because this is just like a normal situation the only reason that this is like everybody sucks here is because i people are I don't want to make a generalization. Some people are unable to have a, a disagreement about anything with anybody without turning it into an argument. You know how many times I'll be like eating dinner with, you know, my in-laws and they'll say some stuff that I like don't agree with at all. I don't go, ooh, so true, you know, but you kind of, you, you, you jeet kun do it, you know? You go, well, I can see where you're coming from. Me personally, my philosophy is, and then you like eloquently wrap your opinion, which might be the exact opposite, in the most reasonable fabric possible, and then lob it back at them and see if you find like common ground. You don't just go, well, 30 years ago, you you know fucked up Christmas for your little kid or something like I mean, if you have a difference about serious stuff, don't get me wrong, but like this is just like normal people like don't have exactly the same opinions and values. It's not that big of a deal. <clears throat> anyway, it's just... I mean, most people are reasonable, I think. <laughs> I, I don't agree with my in-laws about everything. We, we find some common ground, ignore the rest, and then go, okay, you know, let's have some chilaquiles or something like that. Everybody agrees on the chilaquiles. Oh, something went wrong. Just don't panic. What the heck? The biggest internet website that constantly goes down went down? I don't believe it. I'm panicking. I'm panicking. Okay, I'm back. I've, I've made it work. I fixed it. A team of trained monkeys has been dispatched to solve your problem. I, this is, I don't even know if I'm capable of touching this one, so let's do it. See, so let's get spicy. Am I the asshole for telling my husband he can't stay with his gay friends? Why do I have the feeling that their sexuality is not actually relevant here, and they're just kind of like, um, you know, like bad people? <laughs> and it's like you put that in the headline just to get some clicks or something like that. And then it's like, they had a dog that they let starve or something like that. Let's see. <clears throat> oh, well, uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. It's a bit of an essay. I met my husband, Luke, seven years ago when he lived with his childhood best friend, Sam, sharing an apartment in NYC. Is this a uh, 525,600 minutes? This is a play. When I first met Sam, he didn't seem to like me very much. He ignores me, walks away when I visit the apartment, doesn't smile, doesn't respond if I ask a question. At first, I thought he was gay, and maybe he had a crush on Luke, just my instincts. But Luke assured me that he is not and is just shy. A few months later, the third roommate moves out, and Sam invites one of his friends, Will, to take the extra room. Will is bisexual and has a friend, John, who is gay. Can I get Peepo G, please? <coughs> I'm going to need some, some Peepo G here. There's a lot of... There's, this is why when they have a musical, every new character gets a song. So you can be like, oh yeah, uh, the Marquis de Lafayette, that's the guy who raps in French, I remember. I didn't have any problems with this situation until I felt they were openly disrespecting my relationship. There were so many instances, but I, but I will list a few. 
They always text Luke calling him baby and asking if he would go to events with them without me. Okay, it's kind of annoying. One time, John started hitting on Luke in front of me, touching his face, etc., and said something like he could turn him gay. Another time, John started touching Luke when they were working together, and Luke asked him to stop. They all did nitrous together. I wasn't there. And John enacted a sexual motion on Luke, which supposedly made him super uncomfortable, so he left. He told me later. Yeah, okay. Uh, like, I'm going to say not the asshole. Certainly, the situation just sounds like um, your husband was basically getting sexually harassed in his home over and over repeatedly by the people he was supposed to trust the most. Certainly seems like it's, I would say you are not the asshole here. Given that I come from a highly conservative background, this made me feel very weird. Let me stop you there, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump on this grenade for you. This doesn't have that much to do with the highly conservative background, I think. They're just not respecting the, the man's boundaries and his relationship. Trust me, it would be very easy to just roll my eyes, laugh at your comment, farm plus twos. I, if, if I had less integrity, we could be just reaping gift subs right now. Some kind of joke about... Uh, Dick Cheney, I don't even know, okay? But, like, you ha it has nothing to do with your background. This is just, like, over the line in general. I told him I didn't want to hang out with his friends anymore. I didn't tell him not to, but I made it clear that I don't like John. That combined with the fact that Luke and I were moving in together when their lease was up, they thought he would renew it with them, upset these friends, and they decided to stop talking to him. Again, don't threaten me with a good time. Hey, sub cereal, thank you for the gifted subscriptions. <laughs> we moved out, moved on, and lost touch with them. We got married four years after that. About two years ago, though, we found out Sam was, in fact, gay and got married to Will. All three of them are living together in NYC. Their best friend, I think, is, is, is Megan Mullally. Deborah Messing was also a big part of the show. We talked about it on Monday, I think, uh, with, uh, with Sips and Mouth. This, this feels a little bit like a sitcom. Um, to make a long story short, Luke and I... <laughs> you can't do that. You can't write, like, three paragraphs and a numbered list, and then after that be like, to make a long story short, but... Luke and I moved to the UK last year. Luke is visiting the USA now on a personal trip. He did not tell me where he plans to stay in NYC until last night when he mentioned he would be staying with Sam, Luke, and John. He said he asked all his friends in NYC, but only Sam could accommodate, although it was the first time he spoke with Sam after all these years. This upset me. I told him how it weirds me out and makes me uncomfortable. Then Luke got upset with me, asking if I were worried he would turn gay and have sex with them. I got upset and ended the conversation. I see how this story makes me seem homophobic. But I am not, believe it or not. I am just unhappy my husband is planning to stay with these people who disrespected me in my relationship. I told him if he wanted to get a coffee or dinner with Sam, it's okay. But staying overnight makes me uncomfortable. Am I in the wrong with how I feel? I mean, I... Again, I kind of feel like I'm maybe uh, not on the majority side. I don't feel like she's actually being unreasonable in the slightest. I, I, I don't see, like, what, what did she do at all that makes her an asshole in this situation? She's definitely homophobic. I mean, I, I don't get that vibe, honestly. She, did she write people's sexuality out more times than she needed to? <laughs> Probably. By, like, the eighth time that she was like, it turns out that Sam was gay. I was like, uh, who cares? You know, I'm more worried about the, all the times they did, like, whippets together and then, you know, came on to your husband to the extent that it made him uncomfortable and there was apparently, like, a recurring pattern there. Like, that's pretty bad. But I certainly don't, I don't know, it, 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 I don't get the vibe from anything in the post that, that she's homophobic, necessarily. Seems more like, you know... 
he lived with people who were kind of like very disrespectful to him over and over um and is uncomfortable with him staying with them as a result like i i don't know i don't think she's like weird at all here i think it's weird that her husband wants to stay with them and i'm not in you know trying to insinuate that you know he's gonna try to make romantic overtures or anything like that i'm just saying it's kind of like he might just have like some kind of stockholm syndrome where he's like these guys are my best friends but actually they're like we hate this guy and treat him like crap it's just weird can't you just stay in a hotel or something like that you know i guess it's expensive don't get me wrong but you fucking lived in new york city so what'd you expect you die, you know, you go to California and never see a burrito restaurant. Like, you lived in New York City, you're traveling in New York City, you didn't think you'd have to spend a little bit of money. I'm not sure about that. They just straight, that, that's uh, beside the point, don't get me wrong, but at the same time. All right, let's read the comments. These comments are going to be insane. There's absolutely no doubt about it. <laughs> <clears throat> not the asshole they openly disrespected you i would say the same as you yeah agreed not the asshole not the asshole not the asshole maybe they're not that insane actually most of these are pretty rational not the asshole I mean, this is true. If he's not gay, he's not going to become gay. It sounds like he has some immature friends who he wants to catch up with. They might have changed. It doesn't really matter if you trust him, you trust him. That being said, like, I, I agree with this, obviously. But, like, still, these people were, like, they, they crossed the line many times. I don't know. Like, I, I see this less as the issue of, like, you know, can your husband catch up with his friends? And more as the issue, like... You know, I don't, I don't want my partner going to hang out with some people who kind of like, I don't know, bullied them or something like that. That makes sense. You Like, people can change, sure. But there's also like, you know, 7 billion people on the planet. Instead of meeting, you know, people from your life who like wronged you in the past... You could just instead be like, I'm going to meet some new people or something. I don't know, man. At first, I was leaning towards not the asshole, but after reading your responses, you're the asshole. You're purposely trying to victimize your husband to fit your narrative. Look, I can't comment on that. I haven't seen all their comments. Now I got to go through like, uh, I, I got to go to exhibit like uh, the appendices of the book now. He wants to go. He's a grown man. He's capable of making his own decisions. I'm not homophobic, but brings in conservative background for no reason. Hey, look, you can't necessarily... Just because she said she was raised in a conservative household doesn't mean she was homophobic. I mean, is there maybe a correlation there? I don't know. I'm not a demographer. I can't make a statement in confidence. I might have a hunch. But... Nothing in her post says that she's homophobic. I, at least from what I could glean. I think people, there, there is the people sometimes like want him or want her to seem homophobic because it makes the judgment much easier to pass. But I don't think that's the case. Anyway, this is like not as spicy as I thought it would be. I love these comments that are written, written like tweets. Like you can just imagine the clap emojis after everything. You're not wrong for feeling whatever you're feeling. You're not wrong for demanding your husband feel the same as you. Like anytime you see this coming, you know that like the end of this is going to be like, fuck you, go die. A hundred percent. Anytime you get complimented two times at the start of a, of a comment like this, you know you're about to get hit with an uppercut at the end. If he truly felt uncomfortable being anywhere near them after being assaulted, then he would have never thought of contacting one of them and staying with them. You're feeling uncomfortable because they didn't like you? That's valid. Making your husband uproot his plans because you're unhappy? Not so much. It's been years. Years! Years! 
Which is why we've got to stop replying to O.J. Simpson insinuating that he killed his wife all those years ago. It's been decades. Get over it. He's, he's a great tweeter. I think we should bring him on to the Joe Exotic case. It's been years. If he got over it enough to not care about being anywhere near them, you should too. You're married. They're married. The fact that all three live together might even point to them having a poly relationship, but don't take my word for it. Okay, then don't put it in the post. You don't get paid by the word. This is also about trust. You should trust your husband enough to not do drugs and not cheat. If you don't, then you should reevaluate your entire wedding. You're the asshole. It's just like... Maybe I'm like two 1950s pilled. I don't think there's a case, but I'm willing to entertain the possibility. But like this post to me is like, never ask your partner to do anything. You can literally, you can never have a problem with anything that your partner does because you trust them, right? So like, even if your partner was going to do some like really messed up, if they were going to go like skydiving without a parachute, what, you don't trust them? I don't understand. Like, you married them. Certainly you sign off on like absolutely every action they take. If you ever have an issue with them, you're trying to keep them from spreading their wings and flying. Like, of course you can have disagreements with people and you can be uncomfortable with some of the actions that they're going to take. Like, the, the idea, like, you know, it's about trust. You should, okay, you should trust your husband enough to not do drugs and not cheat. But I don't think that's what she's doing. I think she's like, maybe you shouldn't, you know... Go spend the night with people who don't respect your boundaries. And maybe do, do some whippets with them. Uh, and, and, you know, one of the guys was saying he could turn you. That's not even the issue. It's more that they crossed the line uh, that has, he, he said he walked out earlier. It's about boundaries. Read the next comment. Oh, Lord. Also just read your comments. And I realized how disgusting of a person you really are. Okay, to be fair, we need to know what other comments they read before we say that this is over the line. Saying shit like you wouldn't be ready to deal with him if your husband came back and told you he'd been assaulted is disgusting. For his sake, I hope he reads your replies and realizes how horrible you are. That's so horrible, I'm thinking your post is fake. What the actual hell? All right, I mean, there's probably some degree of fairness there. The message is, the tone is a little bit incendiary. Um, you're the asshole completely. Wow. You are the definition of ho homophobic since the phobe part means fear? I don't think, I could think of a lot of stuff that's like more homophobic than what this lady is doing here. It's getting a little crazy, man. I'm straight. I have gay friends. I would have no hesitancy about spending the night in any of their houses because I am not gay. Yeah, but like what if they, uh, you know, three years ago sexually harassed you to the point where you left the house? That might change your opinion on staying with them. It's just my two cents. I kind of feel like the sexuality doesn't matter that much. It's more the fact that they didn't, you know, respect you enough to not, you know, treat you like a, like a piece of meat. I'm sorry, I forgot. That was years ago. I don't know. I just kind of, I guess I take an issue with the idea that, that people are like, you know. I mean, I get that people can change. Don't get me wrong. But I'm also like, just because it's the same thing. Like, you know, it, you ever have like someone that was rude to you in high school try to like add you on Facebook or something like that? And, you know, back when I had Facebook, when I was like uh, looking at people adding me on Facebook like that, you're like, I bet they've changed. You know, high school ended seven, eight years ago. I bet their life has uh, taken a different path. Maybe they want to reconcile, but also fuck off. I don't like 
we knew each other for a few years just because of the fact that we happened to live in the same catchment for our high school. You kind of treated me like garbage. Now, for some reason, you want to catch up and, I don't know, make amends? Sorry, you don't get to have, like, the priority for that. I hit the decline button. I don't really care that you changed, quite frankly. I'm, you know... It's not like I'm harboring a lot of ill will around that, but at the same time, I'm not like, you know, let's uh, reconcile to make you feel better. I'm like, no, I was just happy you're pretending that you didn't exist. <laughs> it's pretty much it. Yeah, it's like, you know, that, that's their own issue to deal with. Okay, I'm being told to read the, all of their posts, okay? To see if uh, that I should be... Um, let, let me look at their comments, and this may provide me with more context. They have a lot. Um, oh, my God. Okay, just, I am civil, too. To me, your comments seem to come from someone with low intelligence. <laughs> he can afford a hook. Oh, come on. These, some, dude, I just went to bad for you. Come on. He can afford a hotel. He has over $1 million in net worth. This is so bad, man. I guess I'm afraid they would assault him. My fear is them assaulting him like the nitrous incident. Okay. My fear is that he would be assaulted, but I know he's not my child. We have a four-month-old son. I mean, people are saying read her username. Okay, her username is throwaway gay friends. I feel like you need to take that in context. Look, it sounds really bad out of context. But also, people make throwaway accounts. They put throwaway plus the conditions of the post next to it. She's not suggesting that you take these people and throw them in the garbage can. It's a throwaway Reddit account. It's a burner. It's not, she's not saying, you know, throw, her, throw his roommates in the garbage. <laughs> it, okay, it is funny. <laughs> it's still, look, it still sounds bad, but with context, it's at least... You know, there's a, a rational defense for it. Plus, have you considered he has over one million in net worth? I mean, okay. Some of the posts are like, they're bad. Don't get me wrong. I don't know. I, maybe this is an everybody sucks here. I think it's also like maybe, maybe, again, maybe I'm stuck in the 1950s. Or maybe I am stuck in what I think that the 1950s is like. But, like, I also am like, her husband sucks pretty hard. Like, you have a four-month-old kid, you're going on an overseas trip, and you're like, let's go hang out with these... I'm not saying they're gonna do whippets, okay? But, like, you know, it sounds like it's gonna be a little bit of a party. I don't know. I'm not saying you can't go on a trip or something like that, but you got a four-month-old kid? Like, you gotta, you gotta be around, man. Well, it's a bit of a spicy one. I forgot about this one. Am I the asshole for leaving my husband's grandmother stranded two hours from home after she tricked us into attending a wedding? That was a pretty good one. That was a classic. If he's going to do whippets with anyone, I'd rather it be his friends. I just, I, I, I think the comment's like a little bit of a joke, but it's like something you say about like a, like a 17 year old kid. I just want him to be safe. If he's going to do it, I'd rather he do it. This guy's like, he's got a child. He's got a, like a four month old kid. He's probably, you know, in his thirties. If he's got to do whippets, I just hope he does it in a safe place. Can't you just sneakily fill your garage mini fridge with an endless supply of uh, loggers and then go out and say you're going to work on the car, drink like six to seven beers a night, dispose of the cans uh, as clandestinely as possible and then refill it before anybody notices that any of them are missing like a normal person? Like that's just, you don't, you don't have to do, uh, you know, nitrous in Manhattan. Like um, you don't have to be that fancy about it. 